Hi, welcome to the second in the Plasma screencast series. Last time we took a look at form factors. Uh, this time we're going to take a look again at plasmoids, but this time we're going to take a look at how they actually get the data that they display. So here we've got plasma on the desktop again and, and kicker on in the panel. Kicker didn't provide any real means to separate data and display. So most applets that you saw on the panel the code to actually get the data, such as say the list of, of windows, and the code to actually display the data was one and the same and together. This created a number of problems. Uh, first of all, there's very few artists that are really good coders and really good coders who are really good artists and really good people at, uh, who deal with usability that are also really good coders and artists, etc. These are really three different disciplines and each of them uh, tends to live in separate individuals. So when you have uh, applets where you have to put all of that knowledge, all that expert expertise into one body of code, it's very difficult to do and there's often compromises that got made. It also made it hard to make new applets because you had to often reinvent almost the entire thing from scratch or you just fork it. And because of that reason in KDE 3 there were several forks of the taskbar alone just to make tiny little visual tweaks to things. In Plasma we, just, we wanted to avoid that. We wanted to allow domain specialists to, well, practice their domain specialty. So usability people should be able to go in and do tweaks. Artists should be able to change the way things look very easily and developers should be able to provide things such as, hey, how do we interact with Windows on the desktop? Additionally, in KDE 3, if you had two clocks, each of them was pinging for the time uh, separately. So if you had two clocks, there would be two timers that would be going off, either twice per second if you're showing seconds, or once per minute each if they're showing the minute uh, time. Obviously this isn't good for power consumption, because it, it's waking up the CPU more than it really needs to be. So I've got my clock right here, and you may be thinking, well, you know, it's probably asking the system for what time it is and actually no, the clock has no idea what it's showing really. Uh, what it is doing is getting its information from what we call a data engine. And a data engine is an, kind of an abstracted uh, way of providing information to desktop components to visualize. So we have a little engine explorer here and I'm going to show that to you. Uh, the data, the engine explorer here lists the different data engines we have. We've got two of them. We're going to look at both of them a little bit later. One publishes the time, and the other one uh, grabs an RSS feed from CIA.vc uh, and, and shows the last 10 commits from the KDE project. So if you look at the time, this data engine is exporting what we call two data sources. And a data source is, is a body of information, a set of key value pairs. So for instance here we've got time and we're only showing one time zone, the local time zone. If we were showing more time zones than just the local one, then we'd have a key value pair for each of those time zones. Uh, the date, similar, uh, similar idea. So what, what's interesting about that is this clock is actually getting its information from that data engine. So if I add a second clock here, they're both getting the information from the same data engine. Neither of these, as we'll see in a second, knows anything about actually getting time from the operating system. Moreover, they're both sharing the resources to actually get the time. Now, while with time that may not be a, a a uh, hugely complex task. Uh, for, for more complex tasks such as RSS feeds, it really does make a big difference. So let's take a look and see how this actually works at the code level. So here's our clock applet again. Um, and, and the time engine is, is much like with the clock applet, it's our example, our sample, our testing data engine. So as we add features and, and play with things, we test it generally with, the, with uh, these two data engines, the CIA VC and the clock one. So in the clock, all it does, it says, hey, give me the time data engine, connect to the time data source, and connect it to this object. All that's needed in addition to that to make things work is to have a slot in your applet or your object that's called updated, that takes a Q string and a data engine data, which is really just a dictionary of key value pairs. So it's a Q string, a set of Q strings associated with uh, corresponding Q variants. And because we're using Q variant to store the data, we can se uh, send in all sorts of different data types. So here, it, uh, every time it gets updated, it says, hey, give me the local time zone 
take that Q variant, change it to time, that's my that's my time now. Now you notice we're not doing a whole lot of checks to see, you know, oh, do we actually does data engine actually come back with something? Uh, we don't delete it in the in the in the destructor uh, of the object, and we don't even check to see if we actually get time back. And that's because all of that is handled for you automatically. As soon as your applet says, "Hey, I want the time data engine," for as long as your applet's running, that engine will be al around. As as soon as the last user of that data engine goes away, so if I close all the clocks, then the time engine also gets deleted automatically. So you don't have to deal with managing resources. And this is really important for when we uh, offer the options to write applets in JavaScript, Python, and Ruby, as we are going to be doing through Cross. Because this needs to be you know, as simple as possible and as quick as possible for people to do. We don't want them having to manage uh, memory resources and whatnot. So even in C++, it's very simple. Now, the example of the RSS feed is a little bit more complex. What we do is we ask for the data engine and then we go through each source that the data engine knows about and we add that source. And what that does here, the source added, is it simply creates a text area, it names it after the source, and then asks the engine to connect the source to the line edit. Now we have a, a series of, of uh, sto uh, stock widgets that come with Plasma, and all of these widgets are aware of data engines. So you just say, hey, connect this data source to this widget, this visualization widget, and it is handled for you automatically. To get notified when new data sources appear, we connect, as you can see here, to the new data source signal, and we just connect it to source added, and we want to know when a data source has been removed, we connect it to data source removed, and to source, in this case, source removed. We could have called this anything, obviously. And all that it's uh, source removed does here is it looks for the corresponding line edit and deletes it. As you see, there's no RSS code here at all. There's no network code here at all. All of that happens inside of the data engine, which can be written by someone who understands how to get RSS feeds, parse them, and publish them. This makes it very, very simple to write visualizations for things that would traditionally be very complex to do, or at least more complex to do, such as get an RSS feed and show it. So in KD3 we had KNewsTicker, which was an RSS reader that was on your on your panel. Well in KD4 not only will we be able to put that on your desktop or your media center display or your panel, but we can divide it into two pieces. So there's a data provider and a data set a data visualization. And if you don't like the way it's visualized, you can very easily get in there and write a new way of looking at it. That in essence is the uh, the concept um, of Plasma and data engines and we hope that that makes it a lot easier for people to get involved and create really beautiful things that are very functional. And so with that, let's cue the uh, cheesy outro music.